Welcome to Health Watch, presented by Novant Health. I'm your host, June Baker. Our show features local physicians and health professionals discussing health topics of importance to local residents. Today, we will talk with Melanie Kelly and Gwen Whitley about palliative care at Novant Health Brunswick Medical Center. Then, we'll meet Dr. Larry Mason, a hospitalist who recently joined Brunswick Medical Center. And finally, we'll have the opportunity to learn more about the new wagging welcome at the hospital with Natalie Clark, Gloria Foss, and a very special guest, Mason. Stay tuned to learn about valuable health topics with Health Watch. Our first guests are Melanie Kelly of Novant Health and Gwen Whitley of Lower Cape Fear Hospice. Well, welcome to the show today, guys. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm so excited to hear about the new palliative care program um, here at Novant Health. But first, I'd like to get to know each of you a little bit better. So, Melanie, let's start with you and tell me what your role is at Novant Health. Sure, my role at Novant Health is a system role and I'm responsible for palliative care services throughout our footprint. Um, we've been primarily focused so far on our acute care facilities and we're really excited to be here to talk about what that means at Brunswick. Um, I have been with Novant Health since 2007 and before that have been working with hospice and palliative care in various forms for about 12 years. Great, that's interesting. How about you Gwen, what is it that you do? Um, I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Lower Cape Fear Hospice and Life Care Center. Mm -hmm. um, I have been there since 2008. I am responsible for the clinical initiatives and clinical programs that we um, sponsor here in Brunswick County and the eight surrounding counties. Have you always been um, in palliative or hospice care? No, I have a rich background in home health and home care um, and about four years previous with hospice. Great, great. How about you, Melanie? Have you done other nursing um, other than um, palliative care? Um, I, I initially started off my nursing career doing um, critical care work mm -hmm. and then cardiac telemetry work before getting into um, hospice care. Oh, great. I think hospice care is so interesting. I think it's such a, it's so valuable. It We're is. so lucky yes. to have it here. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of our interview today is to learn more about palliative care. And so let's just be real basic. So tell me what palliative care is. Sure. Palliative care is specialized medical care for um, people who are suffering from a serious or life-limiting illness. Mm -hmm. um, it is a specialized field of medicine that is recognized with board certification for physicians. Um, we're really there to be an extra layer of support um, for patients who are going through complex illness. Mm -hmm. We specialize in symptom management for not only the symptoms that happen with serious illness, but also the symptoms that happen with treatments that go along with serious illness. Um, and we bring in a whole interdisciplinary team, including chaplains, social workers, mm -hmm. and just um, really give a holistic approach to our care, a lot of help with decision making, goals of care conversations mm -hmm. as um, patients move through their journey. Is it always related, now this is maybe a dumb question, but is it always related to cancer or does it, it can, it's related to all um, chronic diseases, is that correct? That would be correct. Any serious illness, there's no age um, limit that's too young, too old. It's really a, a, a service that reaches out to anyone with a serious illness. Mm -hmm. Now I understand that Novant Health and um, Lower Cape Fear Hospice will be partnering mm -hmm. uh, to provide this service at the hospital. Tell me more about that. How will that work? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to be working in partnership with Lower Cape Fear um, to provide services at Brunswick Medical Center mm -hmm. and we're looking to start services sometime this March. Mm -hmm. um, and there's two wonderful providers who will be providing services that I'll let Gwen tell a little bit more mm -hmm. about their background. Right. Um, Dr. Rebecca Summerlin um, is here in Brunswick County. 
She is board certified in hospice and palliative medicine, which um, has become very much a rarity. There's only about 1,800 board certified physicians in the nation. So Brunswick County is very fortunate to have Dr. Yeah. Summerlin to have those credentials. Um, she will be working very closely with Ann Weatherford, who is a nurse practitioner that is employed by Lower Cape Fear Hospice. And Ann is also certified through a hospice palliative network for advanced care practice nurse practitioners in um, hospice and palliative care. So uh, it's really um, a great opportunity for us to have these specialists here in Brunswick County and to be able to partner with Novant to uh, offer this wonderful service to the residents of Brunswick County. I will say that I personally know um, Dr. Sutherland, and she's amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. We absolutely love her. She's, she's been great um, in the area for a long time, yeah. and lots of folks know her. So mm -hmm. that, that's a great resource mm -hmm. for us. And so you say the, the services will start in March. Mm -hmm. um, explain to me how um, this type of care differs from the care that you would, would receive at Lower Cape Fear Hospice or in a patient's home. How would the palliative care here be different in the hospital? Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> we provide, as you just mentioned, we provide hospice and palliative care to patients in their home. Those are patients that are not in an acute care setting uh, that have the same needs that a patient would in the hospital, uh, help with pain and symptom management, goals of care discussion, um, advanced directives. We talk about advanced mm -hmm. directives and it's amazing that um, the large majority of, of patients and people do not have um, advanced care directives. So that's an important function of our palliative care team. On the outpatient side, it's that continuum of care so that the patient has uh, that palliative care service in their home to be able to hopefully help them remain in their home and prevent the readmissions to the hospital. When patients go into the hospital, most patients go in very unexpected. Um, unless it's for a scheduled surgery or procedure, most of hospital stays are very acute, mm -hmm. short settings in the hospital. So the patients still have their same, the same needs in the hospital. This is a resource that we're partnering with Novant that they can do those referrals and we can have either Dr. Summerlin or Ann Weatherford be there in the hospital that day to see the patient to address those things that they are experts mm -hmm. in addressing with caring for those patients and those special needs. It sounds like um, we need more education about this in our communities mm -hmm. and what have you because I think there are some misconceptions mm -hmm. about hospice as well as palliative care. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can think of, Melanie, that you might want the community members to know or to hear um, to maybe make it easier for them? I think for palliative care that it's really for any um, illness at any stage. It does not need to be end stage or at end of life. I think that's a big misconception that folks think that palliative care is just for the very end of life. Um, it, it can really be given across the continuum and as, as the disease progresses usually our services will get more involved and then, and then there is the transition to hospice mm -hmm. um, who can pr continue that continuation of care um, in the home and provide wonderful services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think when people hear the word hospice they get scared mm -hmm. and palliative they might not recognize mm -hmm. but I think through education we can make this resource available to lots more people. Mm -hmm. So many people think of hospice as giving up and mm -hmm. we, our philosophy is, is that it's, it's about the quality right. and every moment matters. Right. Um, and we want every moment to be as enjoyable and um, mm -hmm. comfortable for mm -hmm. the patient that they can be. With the, one of the main um, differences that I try to explain to people with hospice and palliative care is that for palliative care, you can go full speed ahead with any type of treatment yeah. or um, interventions mm -hmm. from your medical staff. Um, it could be a cancer patient mm -hmm. that wants to continue chemotherapy. Uh, it may be a, a cardiac patient that decides that they want to have open heart surgery, and that is wow. fine. Or a um, renal patient on dialysis. Exactly. Wow. So they are able to tap into this wide variety of services mm -hmm. and care while still being able to go with any aggressive treatment that they choose. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's great information. I'm really excited. I think it's a, it's a great bonus for the folks who live here in Brunswick County. Um, I, I think it's wonderful. So it's been a pleasure to have you here today. I look forward to hearing more about the program um, as it grows. So thanks again for being here. Thank you. Our next guest is Dr. Larry Mason of the Novant Health Inpatient Care Specialist, Brunswick. Welcome to the show today, Dr. Mason. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. Well, great. I want to start by learning a little bit more about you. So tell me about your education and your background. I'm uh, originally from Florida, Titusville, Florida, Central oh. Florida. And um, I graduated high school there. Uh, and I went to University of North Florida, which is in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, uh -huh. for my undergrad. And then from there, I went to medical school in uh, Grand Cayman Island at St. Matthews <laughs> University. And then from there, I did my training at New Hanover Regional mm -hmm. Medical Center in Wilmington. Mm -hmm. And I took a brief uh, hiatus back to Florida, did hospitalist work for three years, and now I'm back at Novant. Now so, you're here. Yeah. So I understand you're new uh, to Novant mm -hmm. Health Brunswick Medical Center. And uh, prior to coming here, w where was it that you practiced? Jacksonville. I was a part of a three hospital group in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been practicing there for the past three years, mm -hmm. doing some medical directorship role in uh -huh. hospitals. For That's wonderful. Right. Um, how are you enjoying it here at? Uh, oh, very much, very much so. It was a easy, smooth transition. Really? Yeah, the team made it. Yeah. very easy for me. To That's walk. great. Yeah, so yeah. so um, I understand you have special training as a hospitalist, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, I know that we've had some hospitalists on the show prior mm -hmm. to you, and but I think it always helps to remind us about what a hospitalist really does. So sure. um, let's tell our viewers about sure. that. Well, we, we have kind of specific training for inpatient medicine. So mm -hmm. basically anybody that comes into the hospital um, is seen by us. The primary care physician turns over the care to us mm -hmm. um, so we can take care of them, um, you know, um, with uh, our, you know, the way that we do things in the hospital, mm -hmm. allow them to remain in their office and take care of their patients that they're seeing on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, it also allows us to uh, get in touch with other specialists that, that you know, we may, mm -hmm. may need uh, that are rounding in the hospital as well. So. Mm -hmm. So you see patients exclusively at the hospital, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So we um, take the patient in from the um, primary care physician mm -hmm. and we exclusively see them in the hospital. We do not do any outpatient I primary see. care work. So we take care of them in the hospital, get, get them their acute illness treated and uh, turn them over to their primary care physician upon discharge. Send them so. back to their home, exactly. uh, their home practice. Yep. Well, I, I will be honest, I have heard some concerns in the community where patients feel like they, their primary care maybe not know what's going on. Um, you know, I know there must be a process by which mm -hmm. you make sure that the primary care knows everything that's gone on. Tell me about that process. Yes. How does that work? Certainly. So when patients come into the hospital, they get a, a, a initial history and physical that gets dictated. Uh, and that will immediately go to the primary care physician for them to see. So they'll know exactly why the patient's in the hospital. Um, also, we can always communicate with them by phone as well. Um, and on a daily basis, we have progress notes that we do. Mm -hmm. They can also see them. Mm -hmm. And then upon discharge, there's a full summary, discharge summary that gets uh, dictated, that gets sent to the primary care physician so they understand exactly what has happened from beginning to end. And uh, any Novant health physician can see it in real time on their computer as well. My so, chart. Yeah. So that's a great yeah, tool. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so actually, their primary care physician then is very involved through oh, the yeah, transfer certainly. of information. Certainly. And, yeah, and what have you? Because we can also see all their what they've done on their end uh, for oh, the sure. past months, years. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I can read every single note mm -hmm. that they've ever seen, seen their physicians. So. Well, that's so, interesting. Yeah. I know that uh, there are several hospitalists at uh, Novant Health Brunswick sure. Medical Center. Tell me a little bit about your team. Yeah, we roughly have about an eight-person team. We have um, six to seven physicians, um, and we have two primary or, uh, PAs um, that assist, the physician assistants mm -hmm. that help us. 
Um, so we roughly see around 40 to 60 patients a day. Um, so that's, that's basically the team. That's a busy day. Yeah, yeah it's a good time. <laughs> So patients would um, may see a couple of different hospitalists then, is that correct? Yeah, um, we try and keep um, what we call continuity of care. So if sure. the, the one physician that sees them from the beginning, we like to have them, um, you know, see them from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. So we like to kind of, uh, you know, not have, you know, five different physicians seeing one patient at a time. So the way that our schedule is set up is we have a pretty long block of, of days that we work. So the likelihood of you seeing that physician the whole time through is, is pretty high. Mm -hmm. The only time you may get switched to another physician would be if we're going off our usual routine. Right. And um, But then again, they'll see that next physician. That should be the one that they'll see for the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. so they right. Should, they should yeah. at maximum only Probably see two at the most. Two, they should only maximum see two different positions mm -hmm. so, at a time. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what about um, specialists like surgeons and urologists? Do they still visit their patients yep, in the facility? Certainly. They, they do. So mm -hmm. we work uh, um, hand in hand with uh, the other specialists, um, surgical specialists, um, the internal medicine specialists like cardiologists. Um, they will all continue to mm -hmm. follow along. And um, the more and more they get involved, the bigger our team gets. And we, um, you know, have you know, many physicians on one case, it's, mm -hmm. it's better for the patient. Right. You know, two yeah. heads are better than one. So. Always. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of how. Always. Well, let's talk about day, day shift versus night shift. How does that information get communicated from the, the physician who's working during the day to the physician at night? Sure. So we have a, a sign out system that we use through mm -hmm. our electronic medical records that we um, can dictate a full uh, comprehensive sign out on every patient. Uh, that can then be printed out and when our night guy comes on we all sit down together and we go through the list and uh, make sure that there's any uh, anything major that needs to be followed up on or if there's an acutely ill patient that needs to be watched closely they will be uh, informed and then vice versa you know they do their night shift and then there's new patients that that come on that we in turn get get the sign out mm -hmm. in the morning so any critical care patient or anything like that they will be seen immediately and um, so the sign out system is very very good mm -hmm. yeah. so. um, I assume that you cover the ER also when a patient comes through the yeah. ER that may need admitted mm -hmm. you would also handle that is that sure. correct? Sure so typically the, the system the way it goes is the ER doctor will call the hospitalist and the hospitalist will come down to the ER and look at all the workup and, and it, deem the patient suitable for admission, bring them into the hospital and um, run any further tests that we feel necessary, um, continuation of treatment, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it be, yeah. antibiotics, you know, mm -hmm. um, so great. other medicines. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's great information. Yeah. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you here today. We're excited to have mm -hmm. you as part of our team and a welcome to the neighborhood, so to speak. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I'm just, I uh, appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for having me. And, sure. Um, Novon has definitely been a, a great company to work for so far. So, great. Yeah. Love looking, to hear it. Looking at doing uh, great things, and it will continue to expand. So. Well, thank you so much for coming. It's been a pleasure, and I hope to see you again real soon. Our last guests today are Natalie Clark, and Gloria Foss with the Novant Health Brunswick Medical Center Volunteer Program and a very special guest, Mason. Natalie and Gloria, it's such a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm really excited to see you, <laughs> but I'm most excited to see Mason. I'm sorry, ladies, but <laughs> he's actually our first canine visit, a visitor on this show. So mm -hmm. I'm really, really excited and I love dogs. But before we go into that and learn about Mason, tell me a little bit now. Natalie, I know you've been on our show before, but tell us what your role is at Novant Health. Sure. I am the volunteer programs coordinator. I help with the day-to-day -day activities of the volunteers and the weekly schedule. I help with some training and participate with some community events. Good. Now, Gloria, I know you're a volunteer. Um, how long have you been volunteering? Um, my husband and I both retired in 2013. He was from at Duke Power and um, I was Brunswick County Schools. 
Well, the first day of my retirement was our first day at Novant mm -hmm. in October 2013. And the more we got used to all the volunteering and how good the program was, we heard by accident that we were going to um, start the program with dog therapy. Mm -hmm. And we jumped right on that. That's mine and Michael's love. Mm -hmm. So I've been working there for maybe a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. sure. And your husband, Michael, he volunteers also, is that yes, correct? Yes, he's a... It's well, a family affair, It's a family right? affair, <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> well, I hear the new program is called Wagging Welcome. Yes. And I'm excited to learn about that. So um, share a little bit about the program, Natalie. How did sure. it all start? Sure. Um, our program started out, as, actually was called Wagging Wednesdays. I thought that's what it was, yes. and you've changed it. We did. As more um, of the pet therapy dogs came available, mm -hmm. it quickly turned into Wagging Welcome. <laughs> so now we offer our little pet greeters Monday through Friday in our lobbies. Mm -hmm. Well, Gloria, tell me a little bit about Mason, and then how is it that he volunteers? Okay, Mason is a rescue dog. He was rescued by our son. Hey, Mason. <laughs> Pretty baby. And um, when our son was stationed overseas, then we came to adopt Mason mm -hmm. while he was out of the country. And upon his return back to the United States, we told him he could find a different dog. <laughs> and so then Mason, when we found out about the program, they were gonna be putting the pet therapy into Novant, we said, we, we're doing that, so we've got to do that. That's our love, because um, we both like giving back to the community, mm -hmm. and Mason never meets anybody that he doesn't enjoy, he doesn't love. So mm -hmm. um, he's, he's worked really well with it. He mm -hmm. likes going out there. This morning he saw us putting our purple uniforms on, and he knew he knew it was time to he go. He knew it was his time. He went and sat by the back door it was waiting to go. time to go to work. Huh? <laughs> well, does Mason have any special training? He does. He does. Uh, part of our program is that you have to be certified as a pet therapy dog. Mm -hmm. And we received that. We uh, investigated here in Brunswick County. We went to Canine Academy right oh, close yeah. to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And Loretta worked with us and evaluated the dog. And we took a couple <laughs> of classes. Um, and. Sweet. She she said he was a natural, so he's been he's been doing this for about well he was the first dog on mm -hmm, December yeah. the second for she about was. three months now he's been working out at the hospital, he sometimes works one day a week and sometimes he works three or four days a week depending on what the schedule demands. And, <laughs> and when you say he works, uh, what is it that he does? He greets okay. people and when people come into the hospital, we're set over to the side, you know, and we we don't. Uh, actually aggressively greet people that way, they ha see the dog and they can c have given the opportunity to come over and talk to him. Mm -hmm. um, the minute he hears his name Mason, mm -hmm. he starts wagging his tail mm -hmm. and then they all, all their hearts melt. Yes. He, he kind of gives people uh, a little bit of therapy, relaxation. Mm -hmm. sure. they're, they're anxious about tests they might be taking or somebody's having surgery and it, they just seem to forget all about that for a little while. Mm -hmm. He's also come out, uh, some people will like if the surgery's taken a long time. Oh yeah. They come back out and they'll say, can we just have another hug for Mason? Aww. And so he's willing to give out hugs and sometimes occasional the uh, kiss if he's, if he's necessary. <laughs> yeah, I, I've had my nose kissed by a few <laughs> times. And we love puppies, don't we? Mm -hmm. Mason, Mason, what a good boy. Yeah, what a good puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would think that maybe some people would be concerned about germs or, you know, the cleanliness. Um, Natalie, tell me how you ensure both the patient safety as well as the, the dog safety. Sure. We set up our handlers and our dogs over to the side in our front lobby, and we give enough access for patients mm -hmm. or people that may not want to have engage our dogs, so they have plenty of access to get where they need to go. And then we also ask that um, anyone approaching the dog uses hand sanitizer before and after, after. petting mm -hmm. the dogs. Great. Um, Gloria, how do the patients react when they see him? We've had very good responses uh, to Mason. Uh, we've had some people describe him as 100% pure love. <laughs> um, yeah, I can see that. That was a Marine that has been in there. And uh -oh. He was worried about his dad and he came by and he said that I love this. He says it's unconditional love and he doesn't yeah. care. We've had some people um, that have connected with the Mason. They've said, you know, my dad really loved dogs. 
so can I just please have a hug so I can be closer to him today? They were feeling mm -hmm. kind of melancholy about that. Mm -hmm. So um, he's, he's really enjoyed it, and the mm -hmm. people have enjoyed having him there. We have some regulars that come down. They know that Thursday's oh, his day, and yeah. they'll come out to see him and just to mm -hmm. say hi to Mason. So he, he's kind of spoiled, I believe. Oh, boy. It's, it's hard work, but he loves it. <laughs> yeah, he does. Um, are there other dogs in the uh, Wagging Welcome program? There are. Right now we have uh, six dogs uh -huh. and six handlers. The owners are their handlers. And they're in the program and they have days of the week that they've been uh, you know, assigned to. We want to get the dogs up to at least uh, two two dogs that we have the opportunity to put two dogs at one time mm -hmm. in the lobby or we can have from like 10 to 12 and then 12 to 2 mm -hmm. and we're expanding the program next week I'm meeting with four other people wow. that already have the dogs and have been certified and gone through the process so we're just doing the last little bit about the dogs oh that's great and I met with one this morning when we were there at the hospital and she's excited about joining the program so it's growing mm -hmm. so anybody wants to come mm -hmm. out you know this is a great opportunity yeah so so there are all different kinds of dogs, right? Big, little, oh, we have, different breeds. Let's see. We have a Border Collie. A border Collie. We have a Gordon Setter. We wow. have two Golden Labs. We mm -hmm. have a Labadoodle. Uh, we have Labadoodle. two Labadoodles. Oh. Mm -hmm. And our Labadoodle, we border have setter. his his brother, his adopted oh, yeah. brother. Tango is going to be, uh, he's in training right now. So oh. it's a seven it's a seven week course uh -huh. and at the end he's certified you know with his good citizenship and his availability she does the evaluation um, we went to the canine academy here in Brunswick County and she d she does that evaluation and she lets you know what are your dog's problems you know even mm -hmm. if you you've got a a dog that needs just a little bit of tweaking maybe mm -hmm. it used to do it a long time ago She'll work with them, and it works out really well. I, I was appreciative that it was local, that we could get that done. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. um, how about other dogs? Are uh, patients uh, or families' dogs allowed to come into the facility? Mm -hmm. Well, currently we just um, provide our pet therapy dogs that go through all this special mm -hmm. training that Gloria had mentioned, and then we will... We do make exceptions at our hospital for end-of-life care okay. type conditions or if someone's had an extended stay, 10 days or more. But if anyone had further questions, they certainly could call the hospital, mm -hmm. you know, about any pet um, policy Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Had. It seems like such a great program, and I don't know why everybody doesn't have it, and I don't know why we didn't have it sooner. Sure. <laughs> it's wonderful. So as we wrap up, um, is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, I would like to say they don't have to be a dog owner to participate really? in our pet yeah. therapy program because mm -hmm. we certainly can use pet therapy assistance and they would help set up oh. for our pet visits yeah. and um, you know, yeah. ensure that people are using the hand sanitizers before and after right. and then eventually they would help um, initiate those visits to the room, patient rooms mm -hmm. and that, sh that program should actually be right. starting sometime in March. Great. Um, if they're interested in getting involved, is there a number? Sure. They would just need to call 910-721-1493 mm -hmm. or they could stop by the hospital and then very soon we'll be having our volunteer applications um, available online and okay, they can great. pull that up at www.novanthealth.org. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It's been a pleasure. And Mason, Mason, it was great to have you. <laughs> Say thank you. We enjoyed it, didn't we? Thank we you so it. much. Thank you for tuning in to ATMC TV's Health Watch. I hope this information was beneficial for you and your family. If you have any questions or topics that you would like to see discussed on a future show, please email them to ATMCTV at atmc.coop. Visit NovantHealth.org for more information on Novant Health Brunswick Medical Center, local doctors, and general health information. Thanks again for joining us today. Be sure to join us next time for Health Watch on ATMC TV.